couple videos back, you saw us install our new budget torque converter in the DR Nova. And tonight, we're finally gonna test it out. We're on our way to Knoxville. We're actually not going to English Mountain tonight. Uh, <laughs> something you guys may or may not know, but Ray actually just lives a couple miles from uh, Knoxville Dragway. We just choose to go to English Mountain. But, uh, ooh, this car wash is loud. <laughs> That's right, guys. I am washing my Corvette in a drive through car wash. Is it total? <laughs> but tonight, Ray just wanted to take it to uh, Knoxville Dragway. We didn't want to have to load it up or anything. He wanted to just drive it out there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're heading out there now and uh, we're gonna see how this new torque converter performs and if I think it's worth the $390 that we paid for it. Now, if you guys missed the first video where we installed this torque converter in the DR Nova, I'll put a little card right up here that you can click on to go watch that video. But basically what it is, is it is the probably cheapest um, torque converter that I could find that still had anti-balloon plates for nitrous use, even though we're not running nitrous on the Nova yet. <laughs> and the rated stall speed on it is 2,800 to 3,200 RPMs. We're gonna find out by data logging tonight exactly where it's flashing. I'm thinking with our setup, it's probably gonna flash on the high, mid to high end. So I'm thinking 3,000 to 3,200, somewhere in there. But We'll find out from the data logs, guys, and like I said, if you want to know anything else about that torque converter, you can click on the info card that I had up there, go watch the previous video, and uh, I'll also put a link for the torque converter in the description of this video, so if you decide you want to buy one, um, there you go, the link's in the description. You ready to go beat on it? I don't know. Let's go change clothes. Let's go beat on it. Yeah, you got to have pants on. This ain't English Mountain. You need your helmet too. Tracy rocking the bad luck garage shirt. Bad luck garage, bitches. Yeah. There she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ray is heading up to the staging lanes. We're going to go ahead and start testing. thinking that's all he was going to run in it was an 8-1 so uh, uh, that's a hell of a first pass I'm going to see what I can do check out the data log see if we can uh, knock another tenth or two off of it and get him in the sevens 8-1 on the shakedown pass <laughs> what'd your 60 foot look like 187 60 foot yeah we're going to work on this aha so we've got it down to... You dropped a half a second already yeah. with that converter. Right. I'm going to check out the data log and see where it stalled to and uh, see if I need to make some changes and maybe we can get another tenth off, hit, hit that seven. <laughs> we got some carved LS goodness over here. We got a, uh, we got a YouTube, a uh, Bad Luck Garage subscriber here, but he don't want to be on camera. We got his Monte Carlo on camera though. What's it running? The project. It's running the 8.3 right now. 8.3? Yeah. I might be able to get 8.3. I'm on three tires, so I got to do it just got to get some drag off. radials on it. Yeah. I got to order a 9 inch for it because he's having to have these cars down like look No. That's what I'm fixing <laughs> to go through with the Chaos Theory Camaro, yeah, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably tear the rear end right out. Them, they just yeah, they're done. <laughs> Hell yeah, what we got here? 750 Holly? Oh, 750 Double Punch. What cam's in it? 228. Hell yeah, man. She ought to run real good. Heads on it. Oh. Okay, that's responsive. Here comes my bad luck chick. <laughs> you remember me telling you about the guy I ran into at Wiggles that day? Yeah. This is him. That's him? 
this this is yeah this is crazy nice to meet you i don't know what happened but for some reason the data log, log shut off while he was at the tree so i don't know what it stalled to but uh yeah that was that was a, a damn good first pass so uh what i did is i just actually sprinkled a little more timing in it and he's going back for a second run i want to see it hit sevens tonight so that's what we're shooting for and hopefully i can get some data on this run and we can see about that convert. the data log held this time and I can kind of see what happened so even with the intake ray made we're still fighting uh, under hood temp issues I think we're gonna we're gonna have to just get that filter completely out from under the hood guys uh, we're letting the engine cool down right now and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go up here and watch some other people go at it He's 60 years old and he's running he's running point one reaction times on every pass guys we are really happy with this converter from total transmission chicago but we're not well ray's happy with the times he's running but i'm not i'd like to see this thing get a seven and uh we are 1.4 seconds away from that so he's gonna give it another shot here after he runs it this time uh we'll give you a little rundown i'll show you the data logs on the converter how it's stalling and everything and uh whether or not i recommend it yeah yeah guys we're still battling heat in this intake and ray has located the filter all the way over here he's moved the filter all the way over here at, but we're still getting like 140 plus temps uh, he even cut a, a hole down there so it could suck some air from down there but i think ultimately what it's going to come to is we're going to have to get this filter outside of this engine bay where you gonna run this pass, Ray? I'm gonna get a seven nine. You're gonna get a seven nine. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, seven nine. Oh, 804. We're right there. 804, guys. We're right there. You couldn't hang a canoe paddle out the window and paddle that extra four hundredth of a second off? Holy shit, man. You were right there. You were right there, Ray. There it is, guys. 8.047. We're knocking on seven seconds right there, man. <laughs> what was your 60 foot? 
Oh, you got another 0.172 reaction time. 60 foot is 1.829. Yeah, my reaction is a little off on that. Man, you were right there, Ray. Right freaking there, I'm man. Have to run good all the way on that one. I'm gonna check the data log, see when it when it shifted in the second there. Here you go. Follow me if you can. What was that? Follow me if you can. Yeah, I, I, I was trying on the way here. <laughs> I was having a little trouble keeping up. So you you pretty happy with it or? Yeah, I'm happy with it. We're nudging those sevens. Yeah. I think uh, we still got to get your math tuned dialed in. We'll do that on the street and stuff, guys. I'm 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 sure. I mean, the whole point of this was to test that converter, and that converter's doing great, I think. But but uh, yeah, guys, I, I think the next time we we bring this thing to the track, it's gonna hit a seven. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit cooler weather. We get that uh, those intake temps down. They weren't that bad on the last pass, but we were still starting off. We started off at 129 degrees IETs, and then by the end of the pass, it dropped to 104. So it is getting some air under there, but what we want is to see that 104 or less at the beginning of the pass. So, yeah, but I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with what we got here. I'm, I'm kind of pissed off. That's like, a french tickler right there man 804 804 <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get ray home here and then i'm gonna go home and discuss data logs with you guys and uh kind of go over this torque converter i do recommend this torque converter yeah. i mean for the money i don't think yeah. you're gonna beat it guys wow. yeah wow. you're definitely not gonna beat it i mean this thing's this That's thing's different. stalling to about 3100 it's coupling hard i mean as I said in the original torque converter video, supposedly it's built to about the same specs as a budget Circle D. Uh, it's got balloon plates for nitrous, everything, guys. It's rated to 550 horsepower. This is definitely a good budget option, I think, but we'll discuss that more here in just a second. All right, everybody, we are back at home and we're gonna go over the data logs a little bit. Now, the purpose of this little excursion was to test the torque converter more than anything else. So that's mainly what I'm going to focus on here, but I am going to show you uh, a few other things. So anyway, let's just cut straight to the chase here and look at the torque converter. Now, of course, I don't have a data log of the first run. Something happened. The laptop stopped right after he did his burnout. It stopped logging. So uh, we don't have that. What, what you're looking at here is actually the data log of his second run. So we're going to look right up here. If you look at the red line up here in this uh, top frame here, the red line is the RPMs and the green line is the speed. And then down here in the third frame, the green line is our throttle position. So what I'm going to show you here is you can see right here, if you look down here, you can see Ray has pulled up to the line and he's, this is actually the run where you saw him do the little hop. So he's trying to stall it up right here. And you can see up here where he's, he's stalling it up. He's got it stalled up to about 1800 RPMs. And I think it pushed through the brake. It started to push through the brake a little bit. So you can see down here, he let off the throttle a little. All right. And the car kind of hopped a little bit and then he, stomped on it right here you can see the throttle position goes straight up to a hundred percent but what i want you to look at is this red line here okay when he floors the throttle this is uh this is where you see how the converter flashed okay and if you look at this this section of the tack right here you can see where it goes up really fast before it starts going kind of sideways there. And what that is, that's the converter flashing, okay? So when he first floors it, the converter flashes all the way to 3,149 RPMs, all right? Which, you know, this converter, I said it in the beginning of the video, this converter was actually rated from 2,800 to 3,200. And I just assumed because of our, our setup, weight, gear ratio, cam, everything, that it would flash to close to 3,200. I said that at the beginning of the video, and you can see that's exactly what it did, guys. It flashed to about 31, 
49, and then you can see the gradual climb. That's where it coupled right there, and the car actually started moving. All right, and you can see it couples hard. Like this line here, it, it makes a straight shot over when it couples and starts going up. So that's good, guys. I mean, you know, no slippage there. Well, of course, there's some slippage, but uh, good pull. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what I like to see in a converter right there is, you know, flashes to exactly what it's supposed to flash at, and then it couples, and the car just takes off. Now, something I want to go over, this has nothing to do, well, actually, it does have to do with the converter. You can see on this run, the car actually over revved. If you look here, it went all the way to right, almost 6,500 RPMs. Now, I had my, my shift speed set at 6,200 RPMs. 6,500 is over revving this cam. Uh, this has the Brian Tooley Stage 3 truck cam in it. It is a 6.0. There is no need to rev this thing this high. And as a matter of fact, I'm sure we were losing some ET because of that. Not sure why that's popping up. But I'm sure we were losing ET because of that. So here's the problem, guys. When you put a higher stall speed converter in your car, what happens is um, it reaches the shift mile per hour. Um, it kind of overruns it. So what you have to do is you have to go back in your tune because this car, I had it shifting perfectly at 6,200 every time with the stock converter in it. But with this converter, it over revs. So what I had to do is I had to go in and I had to change my shift mile per hour to uh, 45 miles per hour where it was set at 48. And you'll see on the next run after I made that little change, that was the only change I made. It shifted right at 6,200 where I wanted it to on the last run. So one other thing I want to note, I keep telling you guys we're fighting with IETs. Well, you can clearly see right here, this blue line right here, and you can see it right here, 142 degrees. Guys, that is an insanely high intake air temp sensor, or <laughs> sensor, insanely high temperature um, on a naturally aspirated engine. I, I don't, on naturally aspirated, I don't like to see this anywhere over 110, and that's pretty high too. So you can see we're way above that. We're at the point where the car's going to start pulling timing. Um, and I have adjusted it to not pull timing until 135 degrees, but we're exceeding that. But you can see as the run goes on, there it shifts in a second. You can see as the run goes on, uh, the temperatures drop down to 111, 109, still higher than I would like to see it. So we are going to do something about that. And then down here, you can see we had a little bit of knock retard on initial throttle tip in there. And then we had a little more knock retard uh, right before he let off here. I did go in and pull a little timing out there and edit it elsewhere. But the main focus of this, guys, is... This converter, again, it flashed to 3,100 RPMs, and then it coupled hard and took off, and that's what we wanted to see out of this converter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into one more scan, and this was the third pass, and this ended up being the final pass. This is just all the burnout going on here. And on this pass, I had put a lot more timing in it, and it pulled a lot more timing out. So you can see right here, it, it actually pulled out three degrees. But purpose of this, what I wanted to show you again, and on this pass, look at the IETs. What we did on this pass is we sat in the staging lanes with the hood up until it was his time to run, and that helped tremendously. But again, uh, we want to get that filter outside the engine bay. And I just want to show you this, that one little tweak I did to the mile per hour, you can see this time it shifted right at 6,121 RPMs. So, and second gear was, you know, the same. So, you know, it sh made that little tweak just for you guys, you know, uh, that need to know when you're running a higher stall speed, you are going to need to go through and modify your shift tables to get your uh, transmission to shift exactly where you need it to shift. But once again, this video is more about the converter. So here you go, guys. Here we go again. And you can see right here, Ray didn't really stall it up as much this time. He only stalled it up to about 1,600. 
and then right here he floors it and boom the converter once again it stalls up to 3087 so just shy of 3100 so uh, we're seeing a lot of consistency there with the converter guys uh, you know about 3100 stall in our application and once again it flashes right there to almost 3100 then it couples and you can see the rpms gradual climb no slippage no jarvis going on here not sure what happened right here we had like a flat spot i'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit but uh yeah guys <laughs> bottom line this converter is doing exactly what we wanted it to do um we knocked over a half second we actually knocked seven tenths of a second off of this car with this converter and again this was a uh, budget converter it was 390 dollars which is insanely cheap if you've been pricing stall converters for 4L80Es, you know that's insanely cheap. Um, again, it's Total Transmission Chicago. I'm going to put a link to this converter in the description of this video. We're very happy with it so far. and We're not even scratching the surface of what this thing's capable of. This converter is rated for 550 horsepower. It is balloon plated for use with nitrous or a turbocharger. And... Uh, yeah guys it's it's a great budget option so if you're looking for a budget converter you don't want to pay six hundred dollars for a circle d or freak show or jake's converter whatever they're great converters guys i'm not knocking any of those i don't want to get any kind of flame war started here um but i'm just saying there is a 200 cheaper option 210 dollars cheaper option on the market this is it link is in the description guys so uh if you're worried about the money and you're not going to be making more than 550 600 horsepower uh grab you one up guys this thing's working great before i sign off i do want to say if you guys have any questions about this build i would urge you to go to the uh playlist section of my youtube channel here there is a complete playlist for the DR Nova. Everything we have done to this car, everything that's in this car is outlined in those videos. Easy to find, guys, if you just click on that playlist. Uh, I do this with all my projects. They all have separate playlists. So if you have questions, uh, it makes it easy to find the videos pertaining to whatever your question is. So check that out. and. Uh, I'm going to get off of here for now so I can get this edited, get it uploaded for you guys to watch. Once again, get out in the garage, get something done, and I will see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.